So I've thought now about the photoreceptors in your eye that convert photons to electrical signals that your brains can interpret, but in order for those photoreceptors to be any good, you need an image formed on the back of your eye. So an in image needs to be formed on your retina. To form an image, we need a lens, and to understand lenses, we need to understand Snell's law, because it is Snell's law that tells you how light changes direction when the light moves between materials of differing refractive index. There are multiple different ways of deriving Snell's law, and you've already seen one of them. If you remember, you use the principle of least action to find the shortest path in terms of time between two points where the light had to cross a boundary between refractive indices. We're going to derive Snell's law again now, but do it from a wave perspective. This is a picture that Newton drew in 1666. It shows a blacked out window with a hole in it. The light comes in, goes through a lens and hits a prism. And this prism splits the white light up into lots of different colors. It is refraction and Snell's law that determines how this prism works in splitting up white light, because it turns out that Snell's law works differently for different wavelengths, depending on the material the prism is made of. So, in the process of understanding how lenses work, we'll also look at refraction and splitting white light up into its different colors. So this is how we're going to set up Snell's law. We've got two different materials, one with refractive index N1, and down here with refractive index N2, and this black line indicates the boundary between these two materials. We have light coming in here with wavelength lambda 1. These green lines indicate lines of equal phase, so you can think of these as the wave fronts. The light hits this interface and the wavelength is reduced, so in this case N2 must be larger than N1. So now we go from wavelength lambda 1 to lambda 2 and the light also changes direction. If we draw arrows now indicating the direction of propagation, so the direction of propagation of the light is perpendicular to these wave fronts, we see we come in with an angle theta 1 and it changes to angle theta 2. What we want to do is find a relationship between theta 1 and theta 2 and that is what Snell's law is. The way we go about doing this is realizing that across this interface the lines of equal phase must be continuous. So we don't want to have wave, a wave peak here matching up with a wave trough. We want the peaks all to line up. And so if we look at the distance between these wave fronts parallel to this interface, on top it's lambda 1 divided by sine theta 1 and on the bottom it's lambda 2 divided by sine theta 2. So we require that lambda 1 divided by sine theta 2 must be equal to lambda 2 divided by sine theta 2. And that's the basis of how, where we get to Snell's law. There's one other process going on here um, when the light's coming down onto this interface. Some light is transmitted and changes direction. Some light is also reflected. So light comes in at angle theta 1. We also have reflection of light at angle theta 1. So angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. So when you have light hitting an interface between two different dielectrics with different refractive index, you have transmission and refraction and some reflection. We can look at a simulation of this now. So here's a simulation of Snell's law, which uh, lives on this FET site. So here we've got a light source. We can turn it on. We can change the wavelength of the source like this. And it shows us nicely the wave fronts, how they continuous across the boundary. And we can also measure the angle of incidence and angle of refraction as we change the angle of the light source around like this. And we can change the refractive index of the top layer here, N1, which changes the angle, change the refractive index of the bottom down there. And yeah, so it's a nice little playground. We can also measure the intensity of the light. So we see that in this case, 82%, 82.4% 82 of the light is being transmitted and refracted. Um, but if we measure the light up here, we see the rest of it's being reflected. We can change the angle here, increase the amount of reflection like that. So yeah, lots of things we can do. Uh, another tool you can play with is the prisms tool here. So here I've got a situation where I've got uh, a prism splitting white light, white light up into its different colors. And the reason for this is that the prism is made of glass glass has a different refractive index depending on the wavelength of light and so the different refractive index for the different wavelengths means that when they get transmitted through this thing at an angle the angle that you calculate with Snell's law depends on the wavelength and so you can move these prisms around and see how they behave put different shaped bits of glass in and look at focusing change your refractive indices looks pretty cool put in the reflections so you can see where all the lights going 
it can become quite complicated. So this is a nice little tool to investigate Snell's Law. Okay, so now we have some idea of how Snell's Law behaves in an intuitive sort of way. Let's go ahead and do some maths to figure out exactly where it comes from. Now I've said before what the condition here is that lambda 1 divided by sine theta 1 must be equal to lambda 2 divided by sine theta 2. Let's go ahead and write that down and we're going to rearrange it so that the ratio of the wavelengths must be equal to the ratio of the sines of the angles. Okay, now we need to introduce something to do with the speed of light which gets us to where the refractive index comes from. So the definition of the refractive index really is that the, refractive in the, the speed of light in this medium N1 here is C divided by the refractive index N1. We can rewrite the speed of light as the wavelength times the frequency in a vacuum. So that's the, the, how light would behave if we were in a vacuum. And so it's, this is the speed in a vacuum divided by N1. And so we can now say that the wavelength in refractive index N1 is lambda divided by N1 because the frequency won't change. The frequency of light stays the same no matter what refractive index you're in. So we can say the speed of light C1 in this medium N1 is equal to lambda 1 times F. And we can do exactly the same calculation for the medium underneath here N2, so that C2 is equal to lambda 2 times F. Okay, so if we take the ratio of C1 and C2, we see that it must be equal to lambda 1 divided by lambda 2. And we also see that it must be equal to N2 divided by N1, because N1 appears in the bottom here, and lambda 1 is on top here, and same with N2 and lambda 2. So we get C1 on C2 equals lambda 1 on lambda 2 is equal to N2 on N1, but lambda 1 on lambda 2 is equal to the ratio of the sines. So all of this together, you can say, is Snell's law. But normally, we write it like this. The N1 sine theta 1 is equal to N2 sine theta 2. And so from this condition that the wave fronts across the boundary are continuous, we get to Snell's law. Now, I showed you that simulation before of uh, white light being separated. This is a photo of, of how that works. There's a beam of white light coming in here. Some's reflected, some's transmitted, and then split up into its different colors. Now, if the speed of light in glass were the same for all wavelengths, this would not happen. Because if the speed of light were the same for all wavelengths, then you, when you calculate the angle, when you go in here and then out here, you calculate the angle of refraction using Snell's law, you get the same angle for every wavelength. So what this picture tells you is that the refractive index must change with wavelength. So Snell's law gives different angles for different colors. And this effect is known as dispersion. Now actually you can use Snell's law to describe a whole rich set of phenomena that you see in the atmosphere. There's a website here that is just brilliant. It shows all sorts of different things you can see as light propagates through the Earth's atmosphere, mostly because of the presence of water droplets or ice crystals. So you see you know, rainbows, multiple rainbows. It's this thing up in the sky here, which looks like a rainbow, but is not a rainbow. Uh, this is called a sun dog here, where you see an image of the sun reflected from ice crystals at a particular angle. And this is the mysterious green flash that um, is due to refraction in the atmosphere. So have a look at all these images. Snell's law really can be used essentially to describe all of these things.